Hello, everybody. Happy Saturday. Happy, yeah, happy Saturday. How is everybody today? Hope everyone's doing great. Okay, we've already got some interesting stuff in here. Yeah, happy Saturday, a great day for some shenanigans. Or, as Denise in California says, French cheesecake. I don't know what French Why cheesecake not? is. Why yeah. Not? I'm not sure what French cheesecake is, but if it's anywhere near as good as American cheesecake, then I'm down. <laughs> hey, Ramon, watching from Bangkok. Welcome. That's awesome. So we got England. We have the Mumsy, the Janice. We got Denise. You got you and me. Got Ramon and some others watching. Hey, everybody. It's going to be a fantastic day today. Yeah. How is everybody today? Let us know how you're doing. Tell us how your week's been going. I promise I care. Um... It's going to be a great broadcast today. We have some awesome stuff we want to teach that we believe is going to bless you, help you. Yes. As you join today, go ahead and like and comment on this. Helps with the circulation and go ahead and share this so your friends and your family can think you're weird along with us. So go ahead and yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, let us know how the week's been going. Tell us uh, what the, you've been doing uh, for the Lord this week. 3 a.m. I hope not to fall asleep. Well, you know what, Ramon? I'm going to try and help to keep this as lively as possible. Um, occasionally during the broadcast, I'll just do an occasional scream, yell, something, just to keep you on your hold toes. I'm going to hold yeah. an energy drink. Options. Squirrel! Just little things and, and techniques and stuff that will help you stay awake. Okay. Oh, goodness. It's tastier. Sander, good to see you, brother. So, again, we have the Dutch in Bangkok and the Dutch in Dutchland, Holland. The Netherlands. Love you, brother. Yes. Good to see you. Aww. You know the drill, guys, by now. We love spending time with you guys. We love teaching the word, and we love it when you guys interact with us. So get ready today. What are we teaching today, honey? How the dream comes is our title. What does that mean? Getting the vision that God has for your life. Okay. Yeah. Well, that sounds like it. That sounds, that sounds nice. We've been talking a lot about vision lately, and it's been, it's been a thing that's been going around the church a lot. We believe it's very vital for every believer. Vision, and again, not just, again, having vision, mm -hmm. but again, that's why it's like, it's not like, that's why today it's not called how to get your vision. Mm -hmm. It's called how the dream comes. So it's like, you get your vision, but then what do you do with your vision? Because there's more to life than just getting a vision, right? You need the vision. If you're going to start, if you're going to, and we talked about this even during prayer and stuff this week, it's like, mm -hmm. if you don't have a plan if you don't have a vision then you can't run your race correctly because how can you run a race if you don't know where you're going if you don't know where the lines are if you don't know where the finish line is mm -hmm. vision gives you the race yes. vision gives you the yeah. line like what kind of race are you running here mm -hmm. oh pastor michael coming in hot on the side here how can, you know uh now i completely lost my train of thought but no like so oftentimes even um a lot of unhappy people you'll even meet uh, as you get, start talking to them, you understand that a lot of their like unhappiness is really tied to them not really knowing their purpose, not seeing really a yeah. future for themselves. Mm -hmm. They they don't talk about goals or dreams, or if they do, it's all over the place. And like you said, there's not this specific target. Yeah. Not something they're really aiming for right. and the word of god says um in proverbs 29 it's where there is no vision that people perish so how important is it to know the vision that god has given you individually because without that and not knowing what to go for you perish because it, it's there's unfulfillment there's making just like impulsive decisions there's a lot that ties into not knowing your vision, not you know, not having that dream come alive to you, it's true. and implementing it. Well, when so. you meet people without a dream or a vision, how do they spend their days? They're either like in a job they hate, just to, you know, paycheck to paycheck, right? Or they don't have a job and they're just getting by in life with that whole thing. Like you know, when somebody doesn't have a vision or has a vision in life, based upon generally speaking, not judging everybody, but like what time you wake up. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, what do you do? Well, what do you do all day? Are you just sleep sleeping around the house? Are you just, you know, uh, you know, movies and video games? Yeah. You know, if you have no vision, another translation says where there is no vision, the people cast off all restraint. Mm -hmm. and Again, that, like impulse decisions. You're, yes. You're led all over the place and there's well, that's why we talked lack about of like, stability in your life. It's true. 
they cast off restraint as well because like we we're saying it's like they don't have they can't see the finish line so they'll go anywhere you know and you right. were talking about a target yeah how can you have a tar how can you hit a target if you don't know what it is Damn it. again if you don't have a target then everything looks like a dartboard mm-hmm. and that's how everybody gets stuck with darts am i right people uh, Oh, bug. <laughs> oh, boy. But again, if you don't have a target, you're just kind of aiming for whatever, and uh, know, Michael thinks winging it isn't a good thing. Pastor Michael Weber from California thinks vision is overrated. That's what he's saying right now. He said Iron Man is better. So unless you're a Marvel nerd like he is, you're not going to get that right now. I mean, I'm kidding. I was a, a Marvel nerd once, too. Oh, it's around your head. I know. I, if thank if you, I go Michael. like this in the middle of the broadcast... It's also trying to keep Ramon. It's, it's also trying to keep Ramon awake. So praise <laughs> the Lord. Yeah, Pastor Michael, stay on with us. Like you do the thing where you interact with us a little bit. I like that too when you yeah. come on here. And also, not being like in him. the perfect will of God, you'll even see that with Christians. If oh, they're yeah. not in the will of God, they're also frustrated. Yep. They may have a general idea of the vision. Maybe God's given them. Mm-hmm. They have pieces to it. They know he's he's. Ask them to, you know, write a book or whatever the example is. But it's like, you know, unless you, oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> unless there's obedience tied to it, you know. Do a, do me a favor, everybody in the comments and stuff. Just if you have your vision from the Lord, if, if the Lord has spoken to you and you have a vision, go ahead and give me a, like a hand up or something in the comments. I just want to see that, you know, we're dealing with everybody has a vision. I know Pastor Michael doesn't, but the rest of you watching, please let me know if you have a vision for your life. Please. You know, because we're going to help Pastor Michael today. Everybody knows he's like my brother. Sorry, if I make faces, it's that bug. It's too Joel small Tola. to maybe like... Sight is the function of your eyes and sees what it is, but vision is the function of your spirit and sees what must be. Amen. Good to see you, Joel, from England. Was it Manchester? Remind me, Joel. Sanders got vision. I know Sanders got vision. Yes. Praise the Lord. So we have five ways, five little keys in order for you to see the dream come in your life. Because it's it would be a tragedy for you to be to get to the end of your life and not have finished your race. It would be a tragedy for you to stand before the Lord and not have accomplished what he has planned for you. Because it's doable. Yes. God doesn't give you something just because he says, well, see what you can do with that. Yeah. No, he gives you, I mean, again, he gives you a vision and a plan. And then he gives you the tools in order to do it. Then expects you to multiply what he's given you. So you have more on the inside of you than you realize it. So what we want today is for people to be stepping into those things. We don't want it to just be another thing where you come in here and it's like, oh, it's a nice teaching and that was cool. No, we want this to be today. We want to help you with keys and tools in order to actually be able to move forward in the areas of life. Because you may need your tail lit a bit. Exactly. And even for those who have been moving forward, sometimes, again, you just refresh, like, you know, strengthen, you know, a little sustenance. And another, you know, again, a little move forward quicker. You know, yes. something God always, like, seems to put in my spirit is pick up the pace. Mm-hmm. Amen. Oh, hey, to see, hey, good to see you, Susie. Which I believe is, you know, part of even covering us being at Revival Today Church under Pastor, Pastors Jonathan and Dahl Strudelsworth. They move quickly. You know, that, that's part of it, too. The call, the obedience, you know, they, they get told, Fort Worth, open a church within... What? Three hours. Three hours. It's Pastor announced. Jonathan is announcing it. So. Hallelujah. That's what you want, is you want people who move quickly. And God will move as quickly yes. as you, God will move as quickly as you determine you're going to move. Pastor Michael and I have talked about this a lot of the time. We talk about this a lot is that, you know, people actually have what they're expecting. And God will go with, with your faith. Yeah. God will go with your faith. So you actually determine how quickly you move. You determine your portion. Yeah. Dig a ditch and God will fill it. How big of a ditch are you dig- digging? Mm-hmm. You can have a little or a lot. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let's get into this today. If anyone can, uh, in the comments, I know some great people always do this for the people uh, watching and stuff. But number one here. So five ways in which the dream comes. Number one, by seeking. By seeking. Now this is what you could call like the vision part of it. So again, this is just the first step, but again, obviously we'll lay the foundation, which is number one, by seeking. So again, you have to seek the Lord for your heavenly plan. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 19 and verse 21. There are many, many plans in a man's heart. 
Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord will stand. Obviously, that determines or that um, means that a person has plans, but you have to seek the Lord. That doesn't just mean sovereignly God's will for your life happens. No, it means there's many plans. You actually need to go before the Lord and get his counsel because that's what's going to stand in your life. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. By seeking. Thank you, guys. You guys are the best. So there are many plans out there. Many people have good plans, mm -hmm. but you have to make sure that what you're doing in life is God's plan for you because even something good, you know, without it being God's plan, you, you'll be tired, you'll be worn out, you won't have joy mm -hmm. like you would with, the, you know, doing it what God has for you. Right. There's so many factors to it and so many factors to life is, again, there's good things out there and people doing good and great things, but if you want to touch eternity... If you want to touch eternity and make an eternal impact, then you have to find and do God's ordained plan. Yeah, and I love um, Dr. Miles Monroe has uh, noted that we a like God-ordained call and vision on your life is going to be people-centered. So it's not something like a vision from God is like, oh, I'm going to have this new house one day or this new car. Those are great, but... A vision from God that he's like calling you to do is going to be people-centered. It's going to help mankind. Mm -hmm. You see Joseph is a great example. That vision that God gave him mm -hmm. was ultimately to help people in a time of famine and be successful in getting through that. And so, um, you know, that's, a, that's just the key. You know, when you're pressing into God, what exactly you know, do you believe is the vision or not? Like, does it, would it line up with the word of God? Yeah, that's good. A vision isn't just to impact you. A vision is to impact yes. the world. Because yeah. again, those things, those things like nice house, all those other things, those, those are great things that the Lord will provide for you in the pursuit and um, planning and execution of your vision. And if you're not careful, it's kind of that same mentality in a workplace climbing up the ladder and just to get that maybe new house or that vacation or this or that. So again, comparing it to the word of God, there, there yeah. is something those are wonderful, different set apart. Those are wonderful blessings. Yes. And that is like, again, it's the cherry and the icing that God keeps putting on. But again, it's not what we aim for. It's not what we're seeking. Mm -hmm. Again, it's the those are offshoots of that. Yeah, Sanders saying again, you receive the vision in the secret place, but you don't keep it there. Just like the you know the apostles when the fire fell in the book of Acts, mm -hmm. it fell on them. They got the vision for you know again the fire of God comes and gives you the vision. It gives you the ability to move quickly. Yes. And they didn't stay in the upper room. They took it out immediately and preached the gospel. That's right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sorry, though. someone's saying I have a fresh haircut. I got my haircut today, so thank you for noticing, Ramon. I appreciate that. I'm looking fresh around here always. Fresh sunburn. Yeah, a little yeah, bit of fresh outreach. sunburn. Praise Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amos 3 verse 7. Amos 3 verse 7. It says, Surely the Lord God does nothing without revealing his purpose to his servants, the prophets. And then Habakkuk. 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 Verse 2. Verses 1 through 3. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the watchtower. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me, and I will answer when I am reproved. Mm -hmm. And the Lord answered me, Write the vision, make it plain on the tablets, that he who reads it may run. Mm -hmm. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but it speaks of an end. It does not lie. If it delays, wait for it. It will surely come up. Will not delay. Mm -hmm. So again, just emphasizing here. God will not move without you moving. God, and again, that you know, you can argue with the, whether it's talking about like you know world events and things, but the point of this here is, is that God reveals everything to those who seek Him. Mm -hmm. So again, seek the Lord; He'll reveal it to you. Amen. Do you have any personal examples? Truthfully, the steps it took for me to get here, Bible school, even like when I went to Bible school and started this whole you know thing. I didn't necessarily, I mean, it's one of those things, I went to the river, I went to the summer camp meeting, and God touched me, and I had an encounter with him. And then a few days later, I ended up in the Bible school altar call. If you ask me, honestly, how I ended up in the altar call, I can tell you. My mum pushed me. Like, physically. 
I was sat there looking around confusedly, like, what's going on? My brother got up there and went there and stuff, and I'm just sat there like, huh? And she was just like, go, you're supposed to be there. I was like, huh? And I got up and went. Then I had to come before the Lord and actually figure out, no, this actually, this is actually what God has for me. And, you know, I didn't have a peace about it for a long time because I was wrestling with it in my flesh. I, you know, I was, I was confused. Like some people, again, they're like, I don't have peace. It's like, it's cause you're still warring with yourself. Mm-hmm. The second I like honed in and said, okay, God, if this is your plan, then I'm all for it. I'll go all in. The peace of God flooded me and it was like, okay. Yeah. That was the same with me. Yeah. But again, you have to actually, again, come to the Lord, find out what he has for you in able, in order to run with it. Yeah. Without knowing what God has for you, you'll run around everywhere and you'll be confused And you'll always be one of those Christians that every year you have a new thing you're doing and then that thing fails. And then you'll tell everybody else about the new thing, which is going to, you know, produce millions of dollars and it will save the world. And then a year later it's failed. Because again, you keep having ideas, but it's not about just having ideas. Not everything that comes to your head is from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. That's good. You have to have it revealed to you. Oh, people are telling my mum, well done. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mumsy. Thank you for shoving me. I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah, it, help, I it helps. That. Me. I don't think I knew that she like... I've said it once before. I've said it. But she practically did. Like, she grabbed me and was like, go. A nice obedient son. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we'll talk about this later. <laughs> So again, we have to receive the heavenly vision. And you know, you know, you can tell when there's a heavenly vision is that when other people see what you're doing, they get attached to it. That's good. A heavenly vision doesn't just remain with you. A real, true heavenly vision has people surround you. Yeah. You know, again, it says that write the vision, make it plain that he who runs may re- that he who reads it may run. That means that when people see your vision, it's going to attract and compel people to come and help because a vision is not enough for one man. Right. One, you know, vision to begin with is enough for one man. Mm-hmm. When you start off everything, it's enough to be one person. But then you have to expand in order to do everything, amen? I got to the point in life finally where it's like I couldn't do it alone. And then God sent me my wife. Mm-hmm. And I had a word about that. The, the old dean of my Bible school, Pastor Todd Holmes, love him. Again, he gave me that word years before. He said, when you've done everything you can alone, your wife will be right there along beside you. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly, I, I'd done everything I could alone. Then she comes... And then just everything yeah. starts And I had growing. to walk in obedience to go to England to attend the, the school there. Mm. You know, that was me showing God I'm serious about the ministry call that mm-hmm. you're putting on my heart. Yeah. Because I thought I'd be a makeup artist growing up. So me when too. I made that... <laughs> When I made that step of obedience, that, I believe, opened up the door for Sam and I, for him to join us together. So it did, because if you hadn't gone to England. I hadn't said, I'm serious, and, you know, going halfway across the world. To intern and at Up until school. that point, you know, I even went to college at a local, you know, yeah. school. So, to me, it was a big deal. But, Amen. you know, you, you just have to follow the steps. So, yeah. he I orders mean, the steps. You know, it's... it's um, by the way, vision, uh, Sanders out. And then you could just kind of fall into it. It was kind of easy. The door kind of opened up effortlessly to a okay. degree. Yeah. Just like going to the river for Sam yeah. and his mom even pushing him up to the altar. It was almost like you get caught in this whirlwind with God and it's just mm-hmm. like, yeah, he makes it happen. I was going to ask. I was gonna Especially ask, if your yeah. heart's pure before him, you, you do want as well. But the second you start moving, things start happening. Yeah. You got to run with it. I say, I saw Sandy here say vision careers. I couldn't tell if it was careers or carriers, but it is. People who carry the vision. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know what? It's and um, something that um, Pastor Dallas said last week during the midweek service has really stuck, you know. And again, it was actually Pastor Dean that talked to me about it earlier in that day, which is be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Truly, the people who do great things with God they are the most comfortable in chaos and you have to get that way because when you move with god and stuff things move quickly god will tell you to do things you know within the vision that's like do it now do it now you're constantly having to ebb and flow in certain areas so it's like you have to be a person who's not stuck in uh, in being uh flexible you can't be inflexible yeah you know the, the real test for that is you know when you start seeing thing you know when you start like you see people helping in the church 
you see people helping in the church and this, you'll give them a task and then you have to tell them we need you to f to move here to do this or that we need you to flip, um, mix it up and you see people you know they either have like a very flexible attitude which is of course let me go do that now or you have that resistance where it's like no you told me to do this no no i don't think we should change things mm -hmm. you know just know that god moves quickly and he wants you to move quickly and if you're inflexible you won't go very far yeah hey good to see you brother matt good to see you evangelist arshad people coming from all over here praise the lord so again by seeking is the first you got to seek yeah. and get amen amen That's good. so what's number two honey number two is by planning planning wait so, okay. isn't that like a cuss word to um like you know pentecostals that's like a cuss word to like charismatic Pentecostals, but again, you you better get comfortable with planning, amen. It's like I have practical steps here. <laughs> God's given me God's given me a plan, and I'm just kind of like, oh, I'm just being led by the wind, like you know, like the you are not the wind. The Holy Ghost moves like the wind. You are not the Holy Ghost. Stop being an airbag. Stop being so full of gas. You're not you're not the wind, okay? Here's the thing: when it comes. Yeah, amen, even if it costs you everything. The thing about the cost is, it costs mm -hmm. you everything in order to, you know, submit your heart. Mm -hmm. But God gives you everything. You know what, um, God spoke to Pastor Rodney years ago and said, when everything means nothing, I'll give you everything. And, you know, when you give God everything, he gives you everything. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. By planning. Again, you have, to, you have to be also not just, you can't be like, oh... Structureless. Yeah. Doing great things for God actually requires great structure. And a lot of people don't want to hear that. They just want to hear the, the Holy Ghost side of things. But the Holy Ghost will lead you and give you ideas and plans and yeah. structure. I mean, Habakkuk 2, uh, 2 through 3 says, you know, write it down, make it plain. Yeah. There's something about writing it down. You're visually seeing the steps. It's something that you can even, like, make these sort of... I guess goals to an extent. Oh, yeah. Okay, have I made? Have I reached this point up until this? You know, well, and point we, of the process. Well, then we can get into the argument, which you might like, which is the the systems or goals thing. And that's what I was gonna lead tell into. Tell no, you about go. It. No, no, no. Tell them. It's actually, just yeah. uh, again, and then systems in your life. Make daily systems that are going to contribute to reaching the vision, reaching yeah. the goals. You set the goals and then the yes. systems help you to the goals. Exactly. So, for example, being in ministry, being a, a, a preacher, an evangelist, doing that full time and it's seeing a global impact. What are the practical steps you need to be doing? You, you need to be reading the word of God, you know, preparing messages, teaching, Set up a bank account, teaching. set up a 501c3. Yeah, all those practical things. Um, shave, shower, look presentable, yeah. um, preach, whatever yeah, opportunities you have. preaching. Even if it's just, you know, online to begin with, you do what you What's you your can. library look like? I love that. It's, it's what are you reading? And there's yeah. also the practical steps. Yep. If you need to learn about business, if you need to learn about finances, if, you if you're weak in an area, and yes, the word of God is amazing and you need, need to be studying it and there's so much you know wisdom and truth to it, but get a library of the arena you're called to, like know as much as you possibly can. If you're called to ministry, Bible school. Yeah. You need to learn how to preach. You need to learn sound doctrine. Even if you're not called to ministry, but you just want to like know how to function properly in life as a business person or whatever, sometimes God will send people who aren't even in call to full time ministry yeah. into Bible schools. Not everybody, but again, you know, learn as much as you can. You know, get what you need in order to be stable in life. And, and you know? also, one more point to add is making sure you're still diligent about your intimacy with God yeah. and the voice of God. And acting in a quick obedience because God's trying to bring your team around you. And sometimes that doesn't come instantaneous when God gives you a vision mm -hmm. and you're thinking like, okay, I, I got to find all these people and, and you know, what do I do? There's those steps that he's, he's going to lead you yep. and you're going to in obedience check, check, you know, and then that's where it's so important to know the voice of God and what he's telling you to do exactly because there could be different business deals and different meetings you tr you are a part of. Yep. I, Brother Jesse Duplantis, I love when he shares details and stories about his vision for, you know, 
billions and millions and like all, you know that amazing just like those big visions that God's put on his heart and there's stories where he's gone into a board meeting and they hand a big check and God's like walk away and it's like that's why you have to be sensitive towards not just any opportunity presented that looks like it could tie into your vision but you know making sure that you're in line and have the, the correct people side by side amen amen anything yet no that's good that's good i would just um along the line of what you were saying with the again just reiterating the the systems which again is something i learned from pastor jonathan and, and i love which is just have the goals but then the the systems are the things that are going to help you plan to get to those places yeah again if you're called to, you know to be a preacher again you better be preparing messages you better start be studying and actually preparing to preach right if you're going to write a book how do you write a book you have to like write a page every day write two pages every day it's like you actually have to produce those things in order yeah, to actually get it done in your skills and yeah it all helps so. amen the bible in psalm 90 and verse 12 says well spoken corinne amen all right good advice there we go my honey speaking and the people are responding and anytime you speak, people are always like, that was awesome. Whenever I speak, people are just like, it's just okay. encourage me to speak more. <laughs> I got the early days when I like maybe said a sentence. Probably in the early days, you were probably very quiet. Oh man, I'd back imagine. in those early ones. Even our background and stuff, it was just like. I, can, I would probably like to. Oh my back in the early broadcast, if but any it's of almost you, kind of funny. We, we, we have some. Look back on. We have some OGs here, so you can bring us and probably tell us and stuff. Back in the early days. Can you guys remember probably so how much good. how much I would turn to Corinne after everything I would say and be like, do you have anything to add to that? Uh-huh. I'd be like, just, honey, do you want to say anything? I'm good. I'm good. And look, look at us now. Look at us go. This is helping me practice. Hallelujah. Thanks, guys. Psalm 90 <laughs> and verse 12, it says, so teach us to number our days yeah. that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Amen. So wisdom makes us, uh, wis- wisdom will help you make the plans to fulfill the call. Again, teach us to number our days. That means you have a limited number of days, so you need to move and get it done now. Yeah. That's all it's saying there is, again, you know, you have time, but you need to use your time wisely. Mm-hmm. Ecclesiastes 9.10. Whatever your hands find to do, do it with your strength. For there is no work or planning or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol, the place where you're going. And that was, you know, again, the preacher speaking very positively there. But again, there's truth to that. Because a lot of people will say, well, God gave me the plan, so he'll make it happen. No. No. Again, we work with the Lord. He works in us. He works through us. But he doesn't do things separately of us. So if God's given you a plan, you have to actually pick up your hands and use them. God's not going to build a business for you. Yeah. If God's called you to business, there's some business people watching here and they'll tell you. Yeah, amen, you go like a rocket. There's business people watching right now, and they'll tell you, no, a business doesn't just happen. They don't sit there and pray for five hours a day saying, Lord, please fill out the paperwork. Please, Lord, get me the permits and the zoning regulations. Please, Lord, just make my building appear. doesn't happen that way. Get up. Move. Amen? Yeah. There's too much ethereal stuff that goes on in a lot of circles, which is if we just pray, it's all going to happen. No, you pray... Like it all depends on God and you get up and act like it all depends on, yeah. on you. Amen. He blesses the, you know, the work of our labor. Not the seed of your pants. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I feel like this scripture here is actually just more of a reference to uh, the vision part. But it's one of my favorite scriptures, so I'll read it. Except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Except the Lord keeps the city, the watchman wakes in vain. That should have been in the first point. But again, the point of that is make sure what you're building is what the Lord has planned for you. Otherwise, it's in vain. Yeah, he's... I, I love... Jesse Duplantis has said this. Like, what, you know, what you start, God has no obligation to finish it. Like, so that's why it's so important to keep in God's plan because that's where people, again, like you said, you could have a, a new idea every year because... He doesn't have to back up. And again, that doesn't mean, again, that God doesn't add to the plan. He does. Yeah, he can, he's merciful and he can no, help. No, again, he adds to it. Like, you've done, you, you're doing well, so he's like, okay, here's another facet of it. Here's another I thing. I mean, if it's yeah. not what he wants you to do. No, totally. That's why. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But again, it's like, it's not like it's a new thing every year, which is what you hear from some people. Yes. It's always a new thing. Hallelujah. 
but he'll back it up if you stay stay on the course. I so know. yeah. What's okay now? Number three. So that was number two. So how the dream comes. The first was, um, what was the first one? I'm forgetting my own point. So um, by seeking. By seeking. Number two was by, by planning. planning. Number three, guys. Number three by business. By business. By business. I love this scripture. Luke 19 verse 13. And he called his 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds. And he said to them, occupy until I come. Mm -hmm. Occupy until I come. Now, what does the translation of the word occupy actually mean? It, it, it literally means do business. Mm -hmm. So the people here are being told, do business until I come. And again, I'll steal from Brother Jesse here with this one saying, which is, oh God. Hmm. I've seen no better, again, I've, I've heard this too from Brother Jesse, and I'll steal it because it's good. But again, when Jesus was left by uh, Joseph and Mary, because they were fantastic parents, uh, when they were left in the city and they didn't days. realize for days, and they came back and he was in the temple, like reasoning and showing the wisdom that he had. And he was like, you know, again, he spoke to his mother, woman, He's living dangerously. Woman, don't you know I'm about my father's business? Mm -hmm. He didn't say I'm about my father's ministry. He said I'm about my father's business. Mm -hmm. So again, you actually need, and again, especially if you're called to ministry, you actually need to treat the call everything as business. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That means that again, you get to work. You take it seriously. You make plans. You make preparations. You do work. Yeah. You do work. Even in ministry, it's like the, the studying and the praying and the preparation, that's work. It is work. But again, if you're lazy about it, you won't get anything done and you won't go very far. Pastor Michael here being cheeky. I've never heard a better vision than that of someone. I'm not going to mention their name, but it was someone in Bible school years ago. Love that business isn't spelled busyness. Amen. Yes. I heard it said that actually you'll find that oftentimes the busiest people get nothing done mm -hmm. and that the busy the least busy people achieve great things mm -hmm. it's true there's an element where it's like at the beginning of anything there's a lot of work and a lot of busyness because you have to get everything like grounded founded and on its feet yeah but the more you grow in something again the more like things offshoot the more help you get the less you'll actually technically do but the more you'll be achieving and the more you'll actually be doing mm -hmm. there's a thing to what the way these things grow there's a there's a way things happen because you'll see even in ministry in churches guys pastors who do everything have tiny churches mm -hmm. pastors who insist on doing everything they're the carpenter they're the painter they're the you know the groundskeeper they're the janitor mm -hmm. you, you know you're gonna be rocking about 60 people for the rest of your life maybe because mm -hmm. you know if you can't give it to other people if you don't have enough vision for people to come around and help you're not gonna see your vision come to pass mm -hmm. vision requires help vision requires you to be able to let go of little things in order to do bigger things yes that's good Amen. hallelujah so yeah it's true it's not busyness you'll find that you have the further you go in the lord you actually have more to do than ever before mm -hmm. but in a sense you are less busy because you have more time to do the other things again you know you often go into see managers and you'll see the fact they're just thinking and they're just planning you know, I can't keep stealing from Brother Jesse today, but he says he'll I go. Was in, too, I think. You know, he says he'll go into his office and he'll just be quiet listening, and people come in and say, "What are you doing?" And he's like, "I'm listening to the sounds of thoughts or something like that." You got it. You got to. You got to think, guys. Amen. Do business until he comes. So, what does Ecclesiastes five three say, honey? It says, for the dream hath come by abundance of business, and mm -hmm. the voice of a fool by abundance of words. So, so yeah so what's the message there do more than you talk yeah do more than you talk don't tell everybody everything before you've done anything do it and then you can tell people yeah you know i think there's what they say it's like a, in a multitude of words sin is not lacking yeah so again you'll often find that fools talk an awful lot and again you might then say well preachers talk an awful lot well it's called the foolishness of preaching so right back at you in your face Boom, you got scriptured. Hallelujah. My vision is a Jesus freak cult compound. 
have to ask you what that means because again apart from the word cult it sounds good but I'm sure you mean well because again I know you Denise you're awesome <laughs> so you know I, I think you wrote it earlier on I'll have to read well. that thank you Susie yeah Ecclesiastes 5 3 Ecclesiastes 5 3 abundance of you'll have an abundance of uh, business or an abundance of words mm-hmm. so again stop talking and get to work Proverbs 14, 23. In all labor there is profit, but idle chatter leads only to poverty. So again, you'll hear some people, they're always talking about what great plans they have and how they're going to make it. But then there's those who just get to work. Mm-hmm. Well, faith without works is dead. Boom. And without faith it's impossible to please God. So you have to have to put it to action. Amen. It's sarcasm. Oh, good luck. Thank you, Denise. I had no idea what that meant. So, okay. <laughs> it's not, you know, it's very difficult to tell sarcasm in text without like, you know, emojis. So, so thank you for explaining that. <laughs> Hallelujah. There comes a time when you have to stop talking, stop planning, and just execute. Just execute. And then as you go further again, there'll be more planning, more things come from it. But you have to just, again, there's a time when you stop with all that other stuff and you execute the plans. Proverbs 14.4. I love this scripture. I'd write this one down, down guys, because I really like this scripture. Where no oxen are, the trough is clean, but much increase comes by the strength of the ox. <laughs> what does that mean? It means, you know, just get into the work, get into the muck, get into just get busy do it you'll sweat just do it amen get to it increase comes by getting to work and not being afraid of the dirt that comes with the work hallelujah what's number four honey number four by being eternally minded that's a good one I like this one being eternally minded yeah yes amen thank you Ramon in Bangkok Appreciate you, brother. Yeah, you can keep us hearing, but just go ahead and get some rest. It's late there. Being eternally minded. And you know, you were actually just talking about this a second ago to a degree. Faith acts upon the word. Yes. Faith without works again, is when dead. I said, faith without works is dead. It's impossible to please God without faith. You need both. You need faith and the works behind it to execute. Because faith is action based upon Every the word of, of God. It. Yes, amen. Faith is action based upon the word of God. But I love, um, so in, in regards to being eternally minded, Colossians 3, 2 says, set your eyes above, not on earthly things. Mm-hmm. You know, I love that because it really is important to keep your eyes, your perspective on the bigger picture. Because mm-hmm. that's where, like, your faith is going to rattle up again when you're not looking at the bigger picture and keeping your eyes set on God and what he's calling you to do. Mm-hmm. That's when those inconveniences or those little struggles or whatever is going to throw in your direction, that's when you, that, that's when you have your faith wavered, mm-hmm. is when you're not remembering the big picture yeah. of the plan. Amen. Pass the mic. And so, you know, what you look, look at, you'll head towards. So. What you look at, you head towards. Write that down if you're taking notes. That'll help you in life. Pastor Michael said he's infinity-minded. Yes, he is. Huh. Pat, Pat. Infinity, Infinity Wars. I guess that's he's, good. He, have you been watching Marvel, Pastor Michael? Because that's all you've been giving me today is Marvel. You miss it. Pastor Michael, let me know if there's any thoughts you had on this or if there's anything God's spoken to you through this one. I want to know, know if God's given you anything through this. Because, again, those guys have a great plan and great vision. They've been doing amazing work in California and they're only growing. Amen. So let us know if there's anything yes. from today. Oh, okay, he was actually thinking of infinity and beyond. Sorry, got my got my franchises mixed up. Hallelujah. By making sure that our actions stay in line with the word of God is a way we tow the eternity line. Mm-hmm. So again, when we're in line with the word of God, we're staying in eternity. We're towing that line that we're staying in line with eternity and what God has called us to. In Proverbs... 2131 says, The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but victory is of the Lord. Mm-hmm. I'm sure I put that scripture in there for a reason at some point, but for the life of me, I can't remember this moment. Just being honest with you. Honesty helps. But, uh, you know, no, again, it goes to, like, again, you actually have the work to do. You have, again, to act in faith still. 
you prepare the horse. You prepare for the battle. Victories of the Lord. Yeah, you can make it work. I mean, you can make anything work if you have to. <laughs> Faith begins where diligence ends. Faith begins where diligence ends. So again, you can't say you're walking by faith if you're not doing the initial work to begin with. You can't say you're going to have the victory if you don't prepare the horse mm -hmm. for the day of battle. Mm -hmm. So, do all you can. And again, reminding here, Woodrow Kroll said, you have eternity to enjoy the honeymoon, but only a short time to prepare for the wedding. It took me... Okay, wait, here we go. But yes, not just active, but advancing. So you're talking about faith there, Pastor Michael? Not just active faith, but advancing faith? It's like you get things done by faith. It's like, you know, you're accomplishing things, but again, actually advancing in life faith. Yeah. He says, it took me four years of pastoring to figure out the difference. Ooh, is that like kind of meeting the needs versus like... The overflow? We've talked about this too, and I've even talked, I was talking to you about this like a couple of weeks ago, where it's like, you never want to get into managing mode, or just like maintenance mode, where you're just like, okay, I've got something working, and now, now we can just sit on this. No, you actually need to always be thinking, how do I grow and advance this thing? Lord, give me the keys and the wisdom. How do I move this forward? Now I've built something, and it's going okay, mm -hmm. but I don't want to stagnate now. Mm -hmm. Things are always moving forwards or backwards in the kingdom. Yeah. King, the kingdom is built on ad advancement and increase, but if you're not advancing and increasing, what are you doing? Retreating you and decreasing. Yeah. Yeah. There's no standing still. Yeah. Kind of going back to the difference between being busy and being fruitful. Mm -hmm. Amen. So yeah. Yeah. Completely. Gotcha. That's yeah, cool. it's true, right? Because even as like, as a pastor and things, it's like you can set up a bunch of meetings. You can meet with people and counsel. You can do all these things and stuff. Um, but everybody's just in a stasis. So again, you have to you have to lead the charge as a leader. You have to like take people and be like, no, we're going here. You're coming along with me. Yeah. We're not just here to again, you know, change your diapers. We're not just here to kind of like you know entertain and feed you every once in a while. It's like no, we're right. going somewhere. Right, and that's somewhere. why people are drawn to confident leaders. Yeah, people. So are... that's that's good. It's true. There's a reason that Pastor Michael has the church he does out there. Yeah. It's because again, he has a vision. And he's, he's, he's giving that to the people. Yes. And they're running around and swarming around him to help bring it to pass. Right, Pastor Michael? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're coming, we're coming up to here, guys. This is the end of four. I hope everyone's being blessed today. Any comments or questions, throw them out there right now. Let us know what's been... Uh, if there's any point that's particularly touched you. Or if there's any, que again, question or comment you have about this. Or any disagreement. I'll have a fight with you today. I'd love to. Let's go for it. The first thing I pray every Monday morning now is, Lord, how do I take the steps to move forward this week? I think you should probably do that Sunday. But, okay, go ahead, do what you want. You know, it's cool. You can come to the party late. It's cool. No, amen. Amen. I have amazing people. We've been so blessed. Yes. You can be, ex Brother Sander here, you can be extremely active without advancement indeed. And by be advancing without being extremely active yourself. Praise the Lord. Mm. That is good stuff, brother. 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 Etern I like the scripture for eternity purposes. Ephesians 5, and verse, we'll start in verse 14 here. Ephesians 5. Therefore he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk carefully, not as fools, but as wise men making most of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Mm -hmm. This all encapsulates what we've been talking about. And again, making it count for eternity. The plan, the call, the vision, everything has to line up and make sure it's for the Lord and eternally focused. But walk carefully. So how do you walk as a fool? By not making most of the time. The scripture is literally telling you that. How do you walk as a fool? By not counting the time, by not moving with the time, and not being eternally minded. Mm -hmm. Understand what the will of the Lord is. Again, how does it say also there in verse 17? Therefore do not be unwise. So how do you be unwise? By not understanding what the will of the Lord is for your life. Yeah. So if you want to be wise, you'll make most of the time and you'll know what the will of the Lord is for your life. Yes. Amen. Amen. 
what you give to God becomes eternal. Mm-hmm. What you do for God becomes eternal. Before you wrap up this, um, this scripture really hit my spirit. Do it. It's Galatians 1.10. For am I now seeking the approval of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? For if I were still trying to please men, I would not be the servant of God. I just want to quickly note about the fear of man and criticism. You know, what people think, not only family, friends, but even strangers. You know, Because the further you go, actually, the more strangers will get thrown into the mix. Yes, yes. Here's one thing is to always keep in mind you're pleasing God and you really want the fear of man burned out of you. Because that will completely cripple and hinder your call. And and you see that plenty. I love Pastor Rodney has shared, you know, I can only take you as far as the criticism you can handle. Amen. Love that that quote from him because it's so true. In a world where even with social media and a lot of people can see your content, etc. And even Pastor Dallas, I, I think this last Wednesday she even noted this. Like God will even protect you for your own sake if you can't handle uh, criticism or the you know people the fear fear of man. So here I, I loved how that that scripture stood out mm. because you have to m- make sure in your heart like you're there to please God and it doesn't matter what other people might say or discourage you or whatever is thrown at you in your vision and your pursuit of the vision. You'll know what's right and, and that God's on your side and that's all that matters. So amen. 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 And you want a practical guide to burning out the fear of men? Go to burn boot camp. That'll burn it out of you. And then I suggest following up with a pint of ice cream. That's going to help. Just cancel it out. I used to do that growing up. The, like Our ice cream in my hometown area, it was called Whitey's. I don't but, know how you feel about that. But I'd go to Plan to Finish and then Fitness and then like drive through Whitey's. <laughs> that was like a joke and stuff. But again, the point of it is just, again, don't be afraid of doing anything for the Lord. And again, yeah, don't care what people think. More people are going to... The more you do for the Lord, the more family, friends, sure. But then even strangers, they'll come into the mix. Yeah. So don't worry. It's yeah. okay. The word of God says persecutions will come. The only way to achieve great things is to be prepared for that. Yeah. I mean, again, even from a natural standpoint, look, go on Twitter or sorry, go on X and look at Elon Musk. That dude gets a- attacked by everybody. And you just have to have, a, you know, a thick skin. Yeah. Not worry because it doesn't matter. Pastor Denise came on. Hey, Pastor Denise. Pastor love you guys. Denise. Pastor Dean and Denise did oh, the outreach today and they did a you phenomenal guys. You job. Did amazing. I think it was like 15 or something. Soul Save. Praise the Lord. It was awesome today. Like, people really got yes, touched. Yes, they're new awesome. pastors on staff at Revival today. And we love them. And we love they're them. amazing. Um, busy will wear you out and make you tired. Mm-hmm. Advancement will energize and inspire you to keep you moving forward. Yes. It's true. Yes. Amen. That's again, that's how you can see that the people who are achieving the most, the Pastor Rodneys, the Pastor Jonathans, the Brother Jesses, those who are like doing they're still incredible things. about what they're doing. But they're yeah. energized, even though they're yeah, so that's busy. So good. That's a they're great doing point. such incredible things. And again, they're busy. It was like, they're doing so much, but they're advancing. So again, mm-hmm. it keeps you, yeah, you are right. It's like, it, it energizes again, you. It keeps yes. you, again. It keeps you excited, as well. Yeah, energize, inspire, keep you excited. Again, not just being like down in the in the mire with all the little things. Oh, I got to do this Tuesday. I got to do that thing. No, dream big, think big, advance in that big thing. Amen. Yeah. What's the what's number five, honey? Because I feel like okay, we're wrapping up here, guys. We hope you've been blessed because we we're here to number five. What is the fifth thing that's going to help you to have the dream come? Number five, by finishing. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you could argue that's finishing the podcast, this broadcast today, whatever. By finishing. By finishing. Amen. It's like Hebrews 12. And we referenced this earlier on, but again, let's talk about the race for a second. Hebrews 12 and verse 1. Therefore, since we are encompassed with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Mm -hmm. So again, what race is set before you? Because if you don't know the race that sets before you, you can't run it. Let us look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Mm-hmm. Again, 
look at Jesus because Jesus knew his race and he ran it and endured and with joy for the finishing the race endured everything he had to go through mm -hmm. he had the incredible 33 years and the three and a half years of, of the ministry there and then he went to the cross but he had joy there's joy in seeing the race and seeing the end of the race yeah when you've been running for a long time this is just naturally speaking or like you know when you're finishing an exercise whatever it's like when you see the end in sight it brings happiness to you you know when you're in the middle of it and you don't know where the end is it can be overwhelming yeah but when you see the end of the race coming there's a joy that comes because you're just like i made it i yeah. did it amen it's really i love the word endurance there because like with comparing it to a race if you start off a race with all with all you got and all of your energy, yeah, sure, you're gonna look very strong and and impressive. But that's actually in that in that analogy, that doesn't help you finish you, strong. You talk about you don't that have in, that endurance of you know no, you gotta pace yourself. You gotta make sure that you're you have that consistency, pushing yourself maybe through that up that hill. You're coming up to a hill and you have to mentally push yourself. Well, you talk about that burn boot camp too. Even though we have the mind of Christ. When we first. <laughs> When we first went to burn boot camp and stuff, Corinne said in the first early couple of times, she'd pick up like a heavier weight to begin with and start to use it, not remembering that it's like, oh, we have like 45 minutes ahead of us. Yeah. And I got to keep going here. Yeah. So. I'd like be doing regular push ups when options were like you can go to the floor on like your knees. And yeah. And the point is to push yourself, of course. But again, when you're going for a long good. time, you have to pace yourself. Yes. And then by the end of it, it was like, I can barely do any of it. But I love Galatians 6, 9 says, do not grow weary in well-doing for in due season you will reap a harvest if you don't give up. That's a great uh, scripture there. Don't quit. N never give up. It's, it's, it's one of those things where you have to determine in your heart, I'm, I'm not walking away. No mm -hmm. matter what it looks like, I'm going to keep going forward. Amen. I'm not giving up. I know there's going to be a great reward on the other side of this. And oftentimes I'm miles. <laughs> Sorry. There's that bug. I know we've been like clapping like for the last like two days. Looks like, like, look like somehow we're, look, a bunch got in. Looks like we're on angel dust right now. But anyway. Squirrel. You know, you may be coming up to your next level and, you know, the enemy might want you to quit on the day before mm -hmm. that breakthrough. But that's why it's so important that you fight. And stand in faith. You know, yeah, Brother Sander here's talking about like being uncomfortable, so, like applying for the worship team. Well, you know, may maybe, you know, because that could be fighting your fears. But again, do we all need to hear that voice? That's a question to ask too. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You know, I would have the same thing if I had to sing. Because again, I can't sing. I I'd like to, but I can't. Amen. Only able to go forward. That's right, Brother Sander. <laughs> Hallelujah. Remember, we're running a race. Yes. The whole point. What is the point of a race? What is the point of a race, guys? To finish. To finish. The point of a race is to finish. Do you ever turn on the Olympics and watch a race that never ends? No. You watch it because there's going to be a winner. Because mm -hmm. it's going to end. Mm -hmm. And the thing of it is, in the kingdom of heaven, is... Pessonese win. Amen. The thing of it with the kingdom of heaven is too, is that every one of us are running our race, but all we actually have to do is run and finish our race and we win. Mm -hmm. We're not competing against anybody. That Again, that's the thing that can happen in the kingdom of heaven is people that's start it. to compete. Yeah. So again, we're running our race. We don't need to look to the left or to the right. To the left and to the right, you'll see other people at varying um, distances in their race. Mm -hmm. Not everyone's race is the same. So again, you can't judge based upon where other people are at. Now you can you can measure where you should be at based upon, you know, what other people have been able to produce. You can like judge, okay, well if they've done a similar thing, then again I can learn from them also. I can grow this way. But again, you don't you're not we're not comparing and competing with each other. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not trying to be like I have the best and the biggest because I'm the best and the biggest. No, we do it unto the Lord because we want to create the best and the biggest for God on this earth. You know, you want to have a great, giant, big ministry. You want to have a great, giant, big business. Why? To be a blessing to the Lord, to help people, to sow into the ministry, to give, you know, to see people saved. I mean, we're doing it all for people. Mm -hmm. 
And again, of course, it's like big church, small church. I prefer a small church. Oh, you do. So you like seeing your city wasting away around you. Mm-hmm. I just like a small church. Oh, so you like seeing the entire area being, you know, denigrated. Right. You like seeing there being problems like that. No, we need giant big churches. We need giant big god, you know, giant big businesses run by godly people. Mm-hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sorry, I just had to go on a tangent there. But again, the point of it is to run the race and to finish and win your race. Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul, again, in 1 Corinthians, he said, I'm not shadow boxing. I'm not fighting an unknown enemy. We're not trying, we're not running to try and get disqualified. And because no one runs who isn't disciplined. Mm -hmm. You got to be disciplined. Amen. That's good. Proverbs 10, 17. He who heeds instruction and correction is not only himself in the way of life, but also is a way of life for others. I like that. I like that. And he who neglects or refuses reproof not only himself goes astray, but also causes others to err and is a path toward ruin for others. So again, you're going to... You know, we're not competing with each other and stuff. You're running your own race. But again, your race is going to affect everybody around you. Yeah. That's good. Because even you, by achieving great things for God, show other people, oh, we can achieve great things for people. You know, again, you see people fulfilling their dreams and it's like, oh, I can do that. Mm -hmm. So again, you're going to be a way of life for people, you know, showing them what they can do through the Lord and through God, or you're going to be a path of destruction for people. That's good. No, you're influencing people. It's so good. Anything you want to add to that, honey? No, I mean, it's all good. Billboards. I don't know what that means. It it, it really provokes you to know, you know, there's a high accountability there. Very. Again, the Bible tells us to walk. Ephesians 4, verse 1. Work or walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. Yeah. And what did it say? uh, I mean, even Ephesians 5 there. Walk carefully. Mm Mm-hmm. Be wise. I mean, what's the scripture, you know? Lord, we cast out, you know, devils in your name and did great things in your name. And the Lord said, you know, depart. depart I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. Mm-hmm. You know, that there, there still is the, a severity to walking in holiness and following God's commands. Mm-hmm. Everything. Every Amen. part of it have to have the balance of it all yep to complete your your vision run or otherwise like you're gonna get close maybe and then all those little things that you let seep in that's when you see crashing and burning for people you know mm-hmm. and that's why you look at their fruit you look at yep. long-lasting fruit yeah follow the people that have been around for years and yes, have actually produced attention. something yeah. and that, not, those again, should be your mentors those who but you not, want yeah. you see that they have that good fruit. exactly but not yeah not just people who have been around for a long time there's a lot of people who are able to hang on for a long time and not produce anything yeah people who have been around for a long time and are doing great things because mm-hmm. they found the keys to advance in life and they've been living holy and living in accordance to the word of god so yeah. those are the people you get around amen, amen. That's good. praise the lord that's good. That was really good, honey. Like, little character bump. <laughs> I mean, you put me on the spot. Do you have anything else to add? It's like, do I? Do I? Do you? No, well, I'm I, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> We're running. Even in my notes. Praise the Lord. That was amazing. We're running to finish. We're running to win. And, then, and again, that offends so many idiots. That offends so many people. Yeah, we're running for a prize. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm just running to bless the Lord. Yeah, and that's a part of the prize. Idiot. Again, the smiley side. I can say it with a smile. Balance the the screen for us. I can say that with it. I can say that with a smile. (laughs) God blesses. He's He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Dummy. See, I said it with a smile. Philippians 3.14 I press toward the goal to the high to the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Guys, how the dream comes. By seeking, by planning, 
by business, by being eternally minded, by finishing. I mean, again, we could we could have done like one that was we should probably should have done that was throwing in though with what Corinne said there again, which is by I I don't know a title right now, but again by by character. Yeah, character is huge. By character, yes. Because you know, again, having character actually again makes ways for you and makes doors for you that you know, you know, being a person of great anointing and talent. Yes. Being yes. a du- being a douchebag will shut doors. You like that? Yeah. Number six. <laughs> that should have been like number like three or four. I know, I know yeah. but still it's yeah. so important. Yeah. By character. By character. Gotta have integrity. I'm sorry, I'm just being dissed here by Pastor Michael. It's not a competition. That's just something losers say. Evangelist Jonathan Shuttlesworth. You know the context of what I'm saying that. Oh, good Lord. Yes, I know. Thank you, Pastor Michael. <laughs> getting rebuked on multiple fronts here i'll take it can you please come visit us yeah how about you how about you stop being all oh i i love your pastor. how about you stop how about pastor michael how about you stop being oh i love pastor jonathan i'm going to rebuke you with his words and actually come visit the church of the man of god that you pro you know profess to love he's been to your church twice now how many times you've been to his yeah i'm calling you out now buddy oh my gosh damn. i'm teasing <laughs> I, yeah, I love you too. I love you too. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, there we go, Susie. By character, Pastor Michael. I'm scared of him. You know, fear is something you know that losers have. Huh. This is how best friends talk to each other. We all yeah, know this. I'm like slide under the table now. The women might be confused, Leave. but the men completely understand what's happening right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, guys. It's a competition. It's a competition in the sense of, again, you better get up and move. You better get up and finish. You better mm-hmm. get up. And again, you better comp- You better be competing against yourself every day. You better get up and being the best and being the biggest. Mm-hmm. And that's that Amen. quality you see in these leaders that, you know, we follow. Pastor Jonathan. Uh, Pastor Kofi said that during, I believe, a noon prayer or Wednesday night. You know, he determines in his heart, I want to give more. I want to, you know... Press in harder than I ever have before. That's the mentality you want. Is Amen. you're always reaching for more and just stronger in your walk. Amen. It's Amen. like an athlete. That's right. Like these analogies with the races, and we've talked about that before with athletes. What do athletes do? I mean, they push themselves to be the best. Amen. And it's like in every area of their life, it, there's discipline. Yeah. Amen. And you have to have that same mentality if you want to, you know... If you want to be great in, in, in the vision God's called you, or called you in, that's what it takes. That's what it takes to reach that, you know, that peak to and the potential of it. Amen. You can do a great job, but there's there's going to be a great and, and, and more abundance to it if you, you know, you give it all. That's give good. it your all. Amen. Sorry. That, no, no, it's good. That's right. That's I, was, right. I also was just like... A, Thinking of Pastor Dallas's like analogy on Wednesday night with her mountain climbing story, yeah, where you know there's that middle of the road, and then she was asked to go to the top, and she didn't want to go and hated it, and then when she reached the top, it was like a whole new, that's right, level to her mindset, and that's what that that's actually what helps us personally too. Amen. Is you're you're breaking those barriers by pushing mm-hmm. yourself. That's right. Any other last things you want to throw in there, guys? Because I kind of feel like we've been watching this and we even threw like in an extra ending, what, extra one in there by character. Any other ones you'd throw in there? Any last comments or questions? Yes, for vision. For, vi- for by the dream coming. Yeah. Pastor Michael, I'm planning on going to, to the 21 days in Fort Worth. Well, fantastic, Michael. That does me not one lick of good. Come visit us at the church here. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, great. You'll go to Fort Worth. Come visit Pittsburgh. We go to California all the time. Come see us. We miss you. Pastor Michael, I'm scared of Pastor Kofi too. Yeah, you should be. I don't think he likes you. I'm kidding. Pastor Kofi's like the nicest man. Yeah, nicest he's, man he's in God. He's amazing. I would like to say that I've known Sam so long, but I remember the days when he'd take an afternoon nap on his black chair after Bible school. 
he'd fall asleep while reading his Bible. That's very true. Bible school was always followed by an afternoon nap. I only started napping in Bible school. I didn't know what napping was till I came to America. I'd like to say that I've known Pastor Michael so long that... Wait, I won't finish that sentence. Um, I've known Pastor Michael so long I remember buying him lunch a thousand times. No, I'm kidding. I'm teasing. Hope, okay. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Susie, for putting all that stuff up there. Hallelujah. So any last questions or comments, throw them in there. We're kind of wrapping up here, guys, but we, we hope you've been blessed today. We, have, again, hope we're giving you the good things that's going to help you. I know. I felt like the last bit of it, it was a little bit of a rabbit trail. That's okay. Around. That's okay. We like rabbits. Yeah. Um, hallelujah. Thanks, Pray with the people today, baby. Like, pray out or? Both. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, pray for so them yes. what we've been teaching. Yes. And anyone watching. Yes. And anybody watching, if you don't, if you have not made Jesus your Lord and Savior, I highly encourage you to pray this prayer with me because there's nothing greater than having what God has purposed in your heart in your for your life. He, the Word of God says that we go from glory to glory, and He's given us life abundantly. Amen. So, and all have fallen short of the glory of God. But that gift through Jesus Christ, that's eternally being with God. And so how important is it? It's the most important decision you can make. You can't run your heavenly race without you this first step. You can't run your heavenly race without this first step. And it's it, it requires, you know, believing who he is, who he said he is, and repenting of sin. Turning mm -hmm. to him, making him your Lord and Savior. Not only Savior, but Lord of your life. You're following his 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 steps, mm -hmm. you're being led by him, and the greatest is yet ahead. So if you've never received him, just pray this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me and cleanse me and set me free. I believe that you died on the cross, you were raised from the dead, and you're coming back for me. Fill me with the Holy Ghost, give me a passion for the lost, and a hunger for the things of God. Thank you, Father. I'm born again. I'm forgiven. I'm on my way to heaven because I have Jesus in my heart. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that with us today, um, I'll put this up here, which is also going to be our giving, but also faithandfireinternational.com, which you can see there. You can go there and click uh, that you just got saved. You can write out your information to us. You can go ahead and you can comment, uh, even the social media, let us know. We'll send you a gift. We want to bless you. We thank you again for watching. Amen. For everyone watching today, thank you so much. We love you all. Thank you for our partners, for our wonderful people yes. that help us do all the great things. And then, um, yeah. We have some preaching coming up too in September. Actually, Pastor Michael is going to be involved in that too. I'm not sure if we should mention anything yet, but just there's some preaching coming up in September. Um, and Pastor Michael is going to be involved in that too. So we're very awesome. excited for some yeah. stuff. Um, but there's ways to partner. Also, if you want to be a part of what we're doing, if you want to be a part of us um, preaching the gospel, teaching the word of God, and um, hallelujah. Doing great things for the kingdom. Again, we believe you're going to do great things for the kingdom. Yes, amen. So if you want to be able to partner with us, go to faithandfireinternational.com. That has all of the ways to give. You can click give now, and it has all of these things that are on the screen. It's usually, again, it's the easier way of doing things, but there's also PayPal me, uh, paypal.me forward slash FFI give. There's a cash app dollar sign give FFI, um, Venmo at sign give FFI. There's Zelle, which is a kind of cool, fun one. Uh, 309-807-8216. Monthly partnership, the easiest way to do it is through Tithely, which again is on the website. Tithely, and look at faithandfireinternational.com. Faith and Fire International. But yeah, thank you for all watching today. This was a good one. I like this one a lot. Yes. How the dream comes. Yeah. Again, let us know if, if any of the days coming, you know, you think of another one that you would have put in there. What would you have put in here? Again, we got, you know, by seeking, by planning, by business, by being eternally minded, yeah. by finishing, and by character. We'll, we'll yes. throw the by character one into the notes there at some point. Yeah. I'll go ahead and re-watch re this and put your notes yeah. in there. But well, do you want to pray for them to receive? No. No? No. Okay. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> Is that good?
Lord, I thank you for everyone watching today that they have received a touch from heaven. And I thank you, Father, that your word has gone forth. And I thank you, Lord, it's planted a seed inside of them. And your word never returns void, but it accomplishes that which it was sent to do. Mm -hmm. So I thank you, heavenly vision, heavenly goals, the plans, the purposes, the everything, Lord, that they need is being implant, implanted in them, Lord. And I thank you. It set a fire in them to run forward with the goal, with the vision, with the heavenly vision. I thank you, Lord, today. From today, people are going to take steps moving forward. And that even in the next few months, the next year, the next few weeks, we're going to hear testimonies of people and what they've been doing for the Lord. Thank you, Lord, anyone watching today that needs a touch from heaven and healing. We thank you, Lord, everyone watching today. If you have any pain, touch that area right now. And go ahead, and I'm going to pray for you. Lord, I thank you, Father, that by the stripes of Jesus, you are paid for healing. So I thank you, Lord, for everyone watching today. If they need healing in their body, any family members, anyone, you can stand in the gap right now. Thank you, Lord, for anyone in your family as well that needs healing, that by the stripes of Jesus, they are healed. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for everyone watching, touching that area. Complete healing right now. Pain to go, but not just pain to go, the actual cause to go. The cause to go. I command their bodies to line up with the word of God. Because you wish above all that we would be in perfect health. Yes. Even as our soul prospers. Thank you for that for the people watching today. Jesus. Just felt led to do that. Amen. Love you all. Guys, we'll, we'll give you an update. Um, just keep in, you know, just bear, bear with us. We might have to change the time or something on the next one. Because next week at this time, I'll be officiating a wedding. Mm -hmm. So we'll be on a beach seeing two young people get married so we'll 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 change the time where we'll keep you up to date but again if not next week we'll back the week after because we'll do this again this time every time we can yes so just again i'm, but I'm then doing there's an outreach i'll so we could still good. do that okay yeah, you're good. so again see us the week after but i'll let you know we'll try and do something else in between so you guys don't miss us too much but we love you have love a you great evening bless you guys have a great weekend. Have a great time at church. If you're not planning on going to church, get your button gear. Go to church. We love you. Take care.